Now, whatever black does, this will be our main desirable pawn structure or simply our main setup. In this video, I want to take a different approach of teaching you how to play the Stonewall attack, which you can also play with black pieces, by the way. So the first thing we simply want to have is this triangle of pawns on the center. And the only piece that we're going to hurt in the opening stage will be the dark squared bishop. This can be justified with the fact that majority of our key pawns are going to sit on dark squares. Now I have to mention that this is not an opening. The stonewall attack is a system or simply a pawn structure or you can call it a setup it doesn't matter. And this is what we're going to be having regardless of what black does. At least most of the times of course. Now before I take you into a practical lesson let me show you how we reach this position with only white pieces. So most of the times we'll begin with pawn to d4. Most of your opponents will be playing pawn to d5 by this time. And then we go pawn to e3. Then black by this time may play something like knight to f6. We can continue with bishop d3. So that we can start controlling this bh diagonal first. I'm sure by this time black should be playing something like pawn to c5. Whenever you see c5, just know that there's a possibility for black to play pawn to c4. Chasing your light squared bishop, your precious bishop away from d3 and that's why c3 is so useful to stop pawn to c4. If c4 happens anyways you always have a place where to put your bishop. Black may play something like pawn to e6 by this time and this is when you develop knight d2 because you want to have total control on the e4 so always remember this. So after black's move let's say knight to c6 this time this is when you play pawn to f4 to have total control on the e5 square. Black may play something like bishop d6. I'm just imagining these moves. Knight gf3. And if they cast a shot, let's say, you also do the same. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the position that you saw in the introduction of this video. Now, wait a second. You just finished making your setup. This is not an opening. So what are we planning to do in the middle game? Knight e5 should be the first move to think of. And then queen f3. Why queen f3? First of all, some stonewall experts say, Without queen f3, your stonewall attack will be incomplete. So always remember this move, queen f3, especially if you run out of moves. It's one move that you can easily forget about. Queen f3 is very important. You also have ideas of going queen h3 some other day. Anyways, after a random move, now that's when you start launching your kingside pawn storm, beginning with pawn to g4. They told you not to move your pawns in front of a castled king, but that was when you were a beginner. In this case, our king is very much safe, surrounded by all the important pieces that can protect it. So g4 is okay. They may play something else, you go g5. The purpose of g5, first of all, is to harass black's knight that will sit on f6, and also to pave way for our queen. So this queen wants to come on h5 so that our king's rook can join the party and later on be placed on h3. E.g. after a random move by black we go queen h5, a random move our rook joins the party and goes to h3. The other plans are as follows, pawn to g6 if allowed, this other knight will come to f3. And I'm sure by this time, your other knight on e5 would be no more. This bishop will come later on in the game. Sometimes we can also quickly develop it by playing pawn to b3 and develop it from this angle. Congratulations, you just learned how to play this stonewall attack against a ghost. Now let me show you how you can apply these ideas against a human being. So here is how a typical stonewall attack game can go. Pawn to d4, d5, then you go pawn to e3. Black plays knight to f6. Remember, the next move that we always want to play is bishop d3. Because let's say if we play any other move like pawn to f4 or knight to f3, black may occupy the f5 square with bishop f5. So you don't want black to play bishop f5. That's why we play bishop d3 first. Oh, by the way, after bishop d3, don't ever get worried about this move, knight e4. This is a very dubious move. We can play all sorts of things. First of all, pawn to c4, but to keep everything in the spirit of the stonewall attack, pawn to f3 will surely send this knight back to f6. So black will lose a tempo. Anyways, going back after bishop d3, you won't see knight e4. I just wanted to cover that. They are going to play something like pawn to e6. 
Again, if you play something like knight f3, you might see knight e4 by black. So you want to control this e4 square before the knight occupies it. That's why we play knight bd2. Pawn to c5. Why did I say whenever you see pawn to c5, just know that pawn to c4 is a possibility and that will send your stonewall bishop away from the juicy d3 square. So you want to play pawn to c3. If c4, bishop c2, still controlling this diagonal. Knight c6 by black may be played whenever you see knight c6 or knight b d7. Just know that black wants to push pawn to e5. They want to destroy your center. So you don't want this pawn to come to e5. So here is why you now play pawn to f4 to completely have control over the e5 square. Bishop d6 may be played and then you just develop your king's knight to f3. Castle short, castle short. And now you can see that we have achieved our main desirable pawn structure in the stone wall. Now from here black may play many different moves it doesn't matter but the most played move is pawn to b6 here black just wants to develop his line squared bishop to b7 anyways b6 you go knight e5 remember what we said we always start with knight e5 then start thinking of our other key pieces like the queen the bishop and the pawn and lastly the rook so bishop b7 may be played and then what do you do pawn to g4 nope that will be too early because now there's just too much pressure on the e4 square in case you don't know how many of black pieces are controlling the e4 square let me show you first of all black's knight on f6 the bishop on b7 is also indirectly controlling the e4 square in case you don't know while well, you only have two pieces controlling this square so and just to tell you the truth once black manages to play knight e4 now it's you who is going to be stoned with the move pawn to f5 black will now be playing the stonewall attack with an improved bishop on b7 that's why we play queen f3 in this position first before rushing with moves such as pawn to g4 so here you might see black playing knight e7 maybe trying to shift all his pieces to the king's side and well you just continue with pawn to g4 intending to go g5 next you can see the ideas now even if h6 comes, we'll still want to go pawn to g5 just to completely destroy the king's side. Knight d7 by black. I like pawn to g5 followed by queen h5 even though it can be attacked by g6. Anyways, just go queen h3. Teaming up with a bishop trying to mate on h7. So g6 is forced. And then you play queen h6. The plan is very simple. You just want to play rook f3 and then rook h3 so that you can mate on h7 we are not scared of knight to f6 thanks to the pawn on g4 we are going to push it to g5 attacking the knight on f6 but in this position the most played move is pawn to f6 trying to chase our knight away from this square and that's the good thing about the stone wall because if you evaluate the position very well you can even suck on g6 take your time calculating through before making such sacrifices in the stone wall attack because things can hit back so badly but this sacrifice is okay because if h takes g6 we first of all take with a bishop intending to mate on h7 knight takes g6 we take with check and after king h8 there is no way for white to defend this upcoming checkmate in point of fact this will be a mate in three let's look at another way of playing the stonewall attack with c takes d4 line all right so again it doesn't matter d4 d5 it doesn't matter what black does all we want to have is this structure where our bishop is on d3 and let's say knight f6 we play knight bd2 they go bishop d6 again knight c6 knight bd7 or bishop d6 prepares pawn to e5 so we go pawn to f4 stopping that c5 they want to go to c4 we play c3 now this time you may see black instead of continuing developing his other pieces play c takes d4 wait a second black's bishop is already on d6 so you cannot take with your e pawn even though we always want to take with our e pawn only if black's bishop is not on d6 eyeing our f4 pawn so in this case it is reasonable for us to take with our c pawn still maintaining our stonewall pawn structure knight c6 may be played whenever you see knight to c6 again the square that you should be thinking of is this the b4 square but anyways you just continue with knight gf3 because if knight b4 comes well you can always retreat your bishop to b1 and play pawn to a3 chasing the knight away anyways let me show you one of the most famous sacrifices in the stonewall attack called the greek gift sacrifice 
So this happens against uh, the Slav defense. If you don't know what the Slav defense is, that's just an opening where black plays pawn to c6. I have a course on this opening called the semi-Slav. It's quite a very good opening. Now let's just illustrate something here. Bishop d3 first. Knight bd7. What did we say? Black wants to go pawn to e5. So whenever you see knight c6, knight bd7 or bishop d6, just think of the move. Pawn to a4 controlling this square so knight g f6 is played so you go knight bd2 e6 you simply go knight g f3 there is no point of playing pawn to c3 here since black hasn't played pawn to c5 yet so you need to be ahead in terms of moves bishop d6 we castle short castle short by black knight e5 this time now here black may play pawn to c5 this is when you play pawn to c3 because you anticipate the move pawn to c4 so you go pawn to c3 anyways after c3 again we see b6 black wants to go bishop b7 to improve his bad bishop queen f3 we go what did i say whenever you see bishop b7 coming queen f3 is very important again just getting ready of the attack bishop b7 is played and once again we have many pieces controlling the e4 square unlike black's pieces so g4 is okay to go with pawn to f5 sometimes black plays pawn to f5 if they want to challenge your light squared bishop with bishop a6 pinning your bishop to the rook pawn to g5 black may play knight e8 and then this is when you hold your nerves and think of the greek gift sacrifice so you just have to visualize this position all of black's important pieces are on this side of the board so this is when you can now sacrifice on h7 this is a very common sacrifice bishop takes h7 check if king takes the bishop we go queen h5 check the king has to go back to g8 and now black may try to play bishop takes e5 well you just go rook h3 anyways pawn to f5 you go pawn to g6 and checkmate is now unavoidable going back a few moves so you might not see black taking on e5 with a bishop they might play pawn to g6 right in this position now wait a second just because you are playing an aggressive opening it doesn't mean that you just need to be sacrificing pieces you still need to be calculating just maintain pressure queen h6 there's nothing that will attack your queen on h6 here plus you are still renewing the threat of going rook h3 mate on h8 etc so knight g7 may be played you go rook h3 anyways if knight h5 wait a second just go on and sacrifice on h5 oh you don't even have to take back the pawn you can go pawn to g6 intending to checkmate on h7 once again if f takes g6 this is a common sacrifice in the stonewall attack check queen h6 check again king g8 now what you're doing here you're just trying to find some better moments and times to win all of black pawns let me show you you take the e6 pawn with check king h8 for example now you want to take this pawn so how do you do it you go queen h6 check king g8 hope you don't take the pawn because you're going to allow black to get back into the game so you first of all give a check the only move is king h8 and that's when you take the pawn now with check if king g7 now you go back to g6 with check if king h8 that's when you can now take the bishop on d6 and now material is equal but you are the one who is ahead in terms of pawns knight takes e5 you take with check king g8 you go knight f3 what more do you want so go and give it a try and let me know how things are going to go if at all you enjoyed watching this video don't hesitate giving it a thumbs up leave your comments in the comment section down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that i can be encouraged to keep on making more wonderful content just for you guys and the link for my website is in the description down below where you can purchase all my courses at very affordable prices 